Hey everybody, welcome to Reach and Reverie. Today's video is actually shot over a three day period as we update on the health of one of our chickens here on our little homestead. So just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Sunisa, which is this chicken right here. Miss Sunisa got bumblefoot, which is a type of infection. So Miss Sunisa has made a full recovery. She is doing very good, healthy as can be, a very happy chicken. So we're really excited about that. So then after Sunisa was ill and she recovered, another one of our chickens fell ill from something completely different. Um, it was Miss Myrtle. Miss Myrtle is this red chicken over here. Miss Myrtle is a very sweet, affectionate chicken. And she unfortunately started acting more reclusive. Um, she wasn't having an appetite. So my first thing was I checked her feet thinking, well, she might have bumblefoot too. And her feet actually surprisingly looked better than the last time we checked them. Whew. Talk about wind. What did I just say in that? Man. So after Sunisa got sick and then got better, another one of our chickens was ill last week. Last week, the chicken that wasn't doing very well was Miss Myrtle. Let's see, she is over there digging in the dirt, looking for some worms. Maybe she found one. Myrtle is a very affectionate Rhode Island red chicken and she wasn't acting herself she got really lethargic kind of reclusive wasn't hanging out with the flock like she usually does and so i went through the list of symptoms she was having and turned out to think that she might have coccidia after giving her corid she did a 180 improvement and now she is completely better so we helped her with that so then this week going into the week thinking all right getting a lot of sick chickens here. Hopefully nothing else is gonna go wrong. And another chicken gets sick with a third illness. And so I'm starting to stress out just a little bit thinking like, what are we gonna do? Um, I start doubting myself thinking I'm a bad chicken owner. Um, and thankfully I had Jean and Luis there to encourage me and you know, tell me, how much I do care about the girls and I can't be too hard on myself. And they were absolutely right. Like things like this happen, especially as the seasons change. Um, you know, it's just like cold and flu season. When we get a change in weather, a lot of people get the cold and the flu. And um, so just gotta not be so hard on yourself. So this week, Mary, she is one of our Amber Links. She is over here. So Mary is one of our Amber Links and just the other day I started noticing that she was starting to look dumpy which is where her appetite decreased. She was fluffing up and she started holding her right eye shut and when I looked closer there was nothing wrong with her eye but she had swelling up on her eyebrow area which to me is an alarm call like she must have a sinus infection or respiratory infection. So what I did with Mary was I went ahead and gave her some Vet RX, which is it comes in a little bottle and it's basically a um, like almost like a Vicks vapor rub. Um, it's this type of liquid that you can rub on the combs, rub on the head, put a little bit under their wings, um, on their little waddles, and it helps them breathe better. It kind of has like a a menthol type um, of aroma. I mean, it's very like herby and it just clears their sinuses to help them breathe better. So that was the first thing I did. I usually put that on all of the chickens. Like I did that to Sunisa to help her breathe better when she had bumblefoot. Completely not a respiratory thing. It just helps them breathe better. Um, and then I also put it on Miss Myrtle when she had coccidia. Just helps her breathe better. So of course, if it's a sinus respiratory thing, that RX is gonna go on them. And so I did that. I gave her some vitamins, which I learned right after that you're not supposed to do. 
I talked to a chicken expert and they told me that if you're treating for Corid, you don't want to also give vitamins because they'll cancel each other out. So we learned from that. I, I do a lot of chicken research in my free time, just trying to improve the knowledge, expand on what we know on how to handle, how to raise, how to treat chickens for illnesses. And you're always learning. And a lot of times you learn from your mistakes. And in the year and a half that we've owned chickens, we've only ever lost one chicken. And that one chicken was lost when we were following the advice of a non-avian specialist vet. Um, so this chicken expert kind of got us back on the right track. And after some research, we were pointed in the direction of using a broad spectrum um, antibiotic injection and so that's in what we ended up having to do with Mary because as we watched her progress, we thought that we were going to lose her. She looked just the way our first chicken Kikio looked right before Kikio died. And so we thought she is on the edge here, so we had to take action. And so I got to give my very first injection to an animal, which I myself don't like getting shots. Um, so that was a new one for me. And it actually went really well. Um, so this video is going to show progress, updates over a three day period as we're treating our sick chicken Mary for an upper respiratory infection. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, our chicken Mary is not feeling very good. Ooh, look at that poop she just had. We aren't sure what is wrong with her, but we think that it is a respiratory infection because above her um, eyes are really, really swollen on both sides. And this literally turned up overnight. Um, yesterday she was completely fine and I have been watching all of the chickens really, really closely because Sunisa had Bumblefoot and she was touch and go for a little bit and she's completely herself again. She is healed. And then this past week, Myrtle started looking really bad. And so my thoughts with Myrtle was that it could potentially be a condition called coccidiosis. And coccidiosis is really scary in chickens. And our chickens have never been treated for coccidiosis. We've never vaccinated or given um, medicated feed because we feel like if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But because of that, um, Regardless, she just wasn't feeling very good and that's what we thought that she had. So starting this past Monday, today's Thursday, we started treating the whole flock with coccidiostats. So when you think that one chicken has, I was gonna say COVID, when you think that one chicken has coccidia, um, you, it's best to treat the whole flock because they all live in the same environment and it's basically um, a tummy bug what we are doing is we're doing a five day plan where we're adding this coccidiostat to their water and it helps get rid of that. After one day of giving them that medicine, Myrtle's perked up and she's acting normal again. So we're on day four. So day four, all of the chickens should be looking really good without coccidia and Mary starts crashing. And Mary is our sweet Amber Link. I have her out here in the dog yard because we just gave her a uh, LA 200, which is a intramuscular shot that's a broad spectrum antibiotic. And we followed um, Auburn, their recommendations for dosing on her in that protocol. But this is Mary. She's just not looking very good. You can see she is holding that eye closed because she has swelling above her eye. She's doing some open mouth breathing every now and then, which makes us think that it's that this is respiratory. She's puff, puffing up, she's just not looking very active. So we're really hoping that this um, medicine is gonna help her. She's looking up and that makes me nervous because we have owls. That's another video I was gonna get to. I'm standing really closely to her because we have a big great horned owl that lives in our front yard and he likes to look for chickens. Hey, I don't like the way she's looking. So keep your 
happy, positive thoughts for Miss Mary. We're going to hope that she pulls through. She is one of our favorite chickens. She's a really sweet, curious girl, and we're not happy that she's not feeling good. I'm going to keep you guys updated. So Mary's so active and lively. She's a chicken that just the other day she jumped on my shoulder and was um, sitting on my shoulder. And you know, she's very friendly. You pick her up and she likes to be pet. And I noticed today was the very first time that she was showing symptoms. I've been really watching the girls because um, Sunisa and Myrtle weren't doing very good. And now that they're doing better, I've just been keeping an eye on the girls. And I saw her, the very first sign was this morning. I opened up the coop and she was the last one out and she was coming out really slowly. And she's usually one of the first girls to come out of the coop. So um, this morning I, I was like, keep an eye on Mary. I came home from lunch and this is how she looked. And this is a bad, bad sign. Seeing them all fluffed up like this, holding her eye closed. Her other eye, she opens. But this one's swollen shut and this today at lunch this eye was swollen up here and now after work this eye is starting to get more swollen too which to me is sinus or respiratory so but she she has some energy but she's just feeling kind of dumpy so what we're doing is we did la 200 and we're also using vet rx which is kind of like a chicken vix vapor rub which you put on their combs and it kind of helps them breathe a little better she knows I'm messing with her but she can't see me hey hi hi Mary come here hi girls come here come on come on yeah Good morning everybody. So it is a chilly 40 degree morning and let's go see how Miss Mary's doing this morning. So this is the next day after we have given her an LA 200 shot, which is an intramuscular uh, broad spectrum antibiotic. So we let the girls out into the run and this time of year, we are not free ranging until um, afternoon about because we have an owl that lives in our yard and big great horned owl and we don't want to risk it getting our girls. So, Miss Mary is, where is she? She came out of the coop this morning and she's over here in the corner, I can see her. So you can see Mary right there, she's still fluffing up. Um, not necessarily a good sign, because even though it's 40 degrees, chickens like the cooler weather. So you can see none of the other chickens are fluffing up. They're all scratching around, getting some food in. After being in the coop all night, they always come out and the first thing they want to do is eat and drink. Hey girls, I'm coming in. So since we aren't free ranging them as much right now, that we've noticed that we have an owl overhead. We've been giving them a lot more things to do. So I usually put in a lot of alfalfa, put two big um, swats in there, and they'll scratch through that. And then I also put a lot of chicken scratch all in here so that they can peck around and scratch and do things. So that's what they're doing. They're looking for all of their treats right now. And then of course they have their flock flock and then this is empty. Um, I'm going to move a second water source in here right now. And then I'll clean that one out in just a minute. And so we'll have two fresh water sources since there's more chickens in here than free ranging this morning. So Miss Mary. Hey. Mary. I can see that she's opening her eye today. She came out and she had her eye open. Right now she just wants to sleep. She's not doing so good. But her eye was swollen shut last night and she didn't want to open it so the fact that she can is a good sign she also came out she was the last one out of the coop but she drank water right away and she drank a bunch of water so that makes me happy that she came out and drank something I'm probably going to try to give her some protein this morning I'm gonna go in and make 
some scrambled eggs. Are you listening to me? I can see you're turning your head. I'm gonna make some scrambled eggs and maybe give her some tuna. Why are you holding that eye closed again? There it is. You can open it. Hey, how are you feeling, Mary? She's a sweet chicken. And because we're not free ranging them as much, it gets messier a lot faster. But I'm gonna go to work in a little bit and I will let them out to free range when I come home from lunch. And that'll give them, they're not happy. Uh, that'll give them a few hours to free range when the owl is much less likely to be hunting. But let me show you where the owl lives. The owl lives in that pine tree right there in the front yard of our neighbor's yard. And so every single morning, like this morning I went and dropped Jean at work and came back and then I went and dropped off Luis at his work and came back. And as I was leaving to take Luis to work, the owl took off out of that tree and flew off probably to go hunt something. And that was just about 20 minutes ago and you can see the sun is just now coming up and at night time we've heard the owl hooting as early as five o'clock which makes us nervous and then just the other day the owl flew out of the tree came about this high off the ground flew through the branches through that big opening and then it goes and it sits on our other neighbor's tree out there and our neighbor right over there, they have a horse and a pig and some chickens. It goes and it sits over there to hunt at night, but it always flies through our yard every evening to go that way. So because of that, that's made us really nervous and we are either out here with the chickens supervising them or we let them sit out here just during like strictly the middle of the day. Now, I don't want the girls to be in a chicken run all the time they're just not happy in there especially since they already expect that they get to free range um so they're more likely to just be upset about it it means we got to give them more treats to keep them busy <laughs> but we are expecting our first frost date this weekend i think on sunday today is friday morning on sunday we should be getting temperatures in the 30s I can feel this one's not happy that it's 40 right now. So, the cactus are probably going to get moved to our little greenhouse here pretty soon. Cactus can survive the winter, but it's just extra stress on them if you don't have to. So we're going to move them to the greenhouse where they'll still get sunlight, but kind of get a little bit um, warmer weather as well, hopefully. I, I honestly don't like... I don't like the way that she looked. Let's go take one more peek at her. See, it looks like she's perching right here. No, like she's perching right there. Holding her eyes closed. Not very good. But I'm happy our chickens are, are pretty nice girls. They're not picking on her. They're kind of giving her her space and letting her recover on her own. She does make me nervous. She looks a lot like Kikio looked when our chicken Kikio got sick and died. This fluffing up, this not wanting to be awake in the day, really not coming out and trying to eat right away is not a good sign. Sweet chicken, Mary. Yeah. Not puffy. Yeah, they shouldn't be puffy like this. This is what they do when they're cold. And you can see, like, our other chickens are not really puffed up right now. They're just being normal, walking around, looking through the food, pecking at my pants, and scratching around. 
looking alert. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna start switching gears here. After really seeing Mary today, I was expecting a lot more improvement. Um, I did see that the LA200 takes anywhere between 24 to 48 hours to really do all of the good that it can do. And then it's in their system for three days. So <laughs> they're gonna play right now. Hey, 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 hey. Guys. So the way that I saw her this morning, she just wasn't really looking as good as I expected. Even though I know it's gonna take some time for the medicine to help her, um, her eye is able to open now even though she's still holding it closed. Um, her swelling on her face is going down a little bit. So the medicine is helping her, but I still, still see her as touch and go. Like I feel like I could go out to check on her and she could pass. Like it's that scary. Um, and so with it being 40 degrees. I know that's really not that cold for a chicken, but with her already having to fight with her immune system and with the girls as cooped up as they are, I know our flock of chickens, they have never seen a bad day in their lives. Like they have nothing but love that they know. They are spoiled. They aren't afraid of people. Like they've been really well cared for and they're very gentle to each other. So our flock of girls are really, really friendly. But that being said, I'm putting them in a situation that's unusual. I'm keeping them in their chicken run for longer than I usually do because we have a seasonal predator in the area. Um, this owl that has come in isn't here during the spring or the summer. It just decided to live in this tree. Um, it is migration season, so that I guess is to be expected. Um, but we'll have different predators in the area that aren't usually here. So with everything going on, it makes sense that the girls are gonna be more frustrated. They hear me talking right now and I can hear them asking to come out. So with that being said, I feel like they're gonna be more frustrated. They're gonna be a little bit more, and they're animals. Like you can't expect them to always behave the way you think that they're gonna behave. So just to be safe, we're gonna go ahead and pull Mary out um, and probably put her in a crate in our tool room to try to see how she does today. That way she can have a place that's nice and quiet. The tool room's actually heated because we are growing fall crops in there. Um, I have a little grow room set up so that we can grow things like broccoli and, and anyway, that's for another video. Um, so because it's heated, I think it'll be easier for her to just have a nice dark space where she can heal without being pushed over, or picked on, or bullied in any way. Uh, Mary is low on the pecking order. She is number seven out of nine in the pecking order, which means that when it comes to food, she's one of the last ones allowed to eat. Um, so even though they really don't hurt her, they might keep her from getting the nutrition she needs while she really needs this to heal. So in a normal situation, I would keep the injured chicken with the flock because I feel like it boosts their morale, it helps them heal faster knowing that it's a, it's still going to maintain their general routine that they have on a day to day basis. So like with Sunisa, Sunisa had bumblefoot and she kind of went under the weather for a little bit. I kept her with the flock because Sunisa is number two in the pecking order which means that any point that she was feeling a little better she was picking on the other girls. Um, and if she wanted food she was going to get the food. So, and then Myrtle got a little ill last week with what we think was coccidia. So we've been treating her and Myrtle is number like four in the pecking order out of nine, which means that she has some that pick on her, but she's also not the last one to get food. So she did good. She's healed really well. We have the whole flock on coccidio stats, which means that if you think one chicken has this infection, they all live in the same environment, they probably all have it. So you go ahead and treat everybody as soon as one starts showing symptoms to just nip it in the bud. And you can't be too hard on yourself with chickens. Animals get sick and no matter what you do, no matter if you clean the coop every single week, my phone's telling me to go to work. Um, 
still got about 45 minutes before I have to be there, but um, things happen and you just have to roll with the punches and know how to address them. So a chicken, any chicken from any flock, no matter what care can get bumblefoot. You have to know how to treat it. Um, any chicken from any flock can get coccidia. That's why they have vaccines and that's why they have um, medicated feed for chicks because it's highly likely that when you have a chick, when their immune system is low, they're gonna get it. Now coccidia, as the chicken ages, their immune system should be able to fight it off unless they have something that lowered their immune system or they've never been introduced to it before. Um, they should be able to, you know, deal with it. But when things like fall season happen and your seasons are changing and the weather can be 100 degrees one day and then 35 the next day and then go back up to 80 degrees and then you get a wind advisory and then it drops down to 40 degrees and then tonight it's going to be 80 and then it's going to go down to 35 like that is just asking for respiratory you know something going on so um, we are shortly going to be winterizing our coop. We keep our chicken coop really ventilated because where we live, most of the time in the summer, it's above 100 degrees. So you want the hot air to get out. But when the seasons change, you need to be prepared to reduce ventilation because the quickest way to a sick chicken is a cold, drafty, wet environment. And so we don't get a lot of wet here, but we do get a lot of wind here. And so I'm thinking that might have expedited Mary getting sick, was that we were 100 degrees the other day, and then it dropped down to 40 at night, and we had 50 mile an hour winds. And their coop is open all around. So um, that being said, you can't be too hard on yourself. All you can do is move forward and react and do the best you can. And my dogs are playing again. Hey. Hey. What are y'all doing? Y'all better not be running in the poop area. Evie's in the poop area. So these guys are trained. They only poop along the wall right over there, but I don't like them running back there and stepping in poop. Are you stalking Dyson? You being sneaky sneaky? He knows you're coming. Dyson, go get on the couch. Evie, we're not gonna play right now. <laughs> what happened? I usually take them for a walk before work and I didn't today because we are playing doctor. You scratching your booty? You like your booty scratches? Come in. Come sit down. Can you get up there? You sit with Dyson? He's not chasing you. Dyson, lay down. Good job. Lay down. Good job. Evie, come here. Shh, 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 shh. Sit down. Evie. Evie, sit down. You being playful today? Yeah? <laughs> oh my goodness. They're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah, so you can see my peppers don't like how cold it is today, but I'm gonna just go and pick everything. Overall, just a little frustrated with how Sunisa got sick and Myrtle got sick and now Mary's sick and it's like within two weeks. I feel like bad news always comes in clusters, but you, you can't be too hard on yourself. Like Mary, I know was fine a couple days ago and I think that I do a pretty good job with the chickens, um, but things are gonna happen and I would rather be prepared for things to happen than be in la la land expecting that everything is just gonna always be okay. Now chickens can live to be up to 10 years old. The, I think the oldest chicken I've ever heard of has, was like 17 or 18 years old. So their life expectancy could be similar to like that of a dog or a cat. However, a lot of bad things can happen to chickens. They can have egg laying problems. They 
could get sick very easily in chickens but they don't show that they're sick unless they're really sick so um a lot of times you miss it um, one symptom that you read a lot of like when you're looking at chicken health books is alive today dead tomorrow and that is an understatement that if you're not if you don't know your chickens and understand chicken behavior you might think that your chickens fine when it's not and so I feel like that was something that happened with Mary I came home from lunch yesterday and I was already keeping an eye on her because she was the last from the coop coming out last from the coop doesn't sound like a sickness um, an illness symptom but if you know your chickens and understand okay Mary's always wanting to come out and eat and look around and come out and explore and she's the last one coming out of the coop red flag and then you she comes out and just moving around slow not going for food right away that's a symptom so I get home from lunch and Luis happened to have lunch with me yesterday and we come out we're walking out to check on our fall crops that we have started in the tool room and I look over and he just sees my face and he's like what and I'm like look at Mary and he looked at her and he's like is she sick and I'm like I think that she could die like that's how quickly you know that something's wrong with your chickens and you don't have to be a bad chicken owner for something like that to happen. Like, people get sick, animals get sick, chickens get sick. Um, so we're gonna help Mary today. There she is, she's still on that dust bathing tub. Look, Sinisa's doing good. She's over here pecking around. Myrtle's doing good, she's back there pecking around. Alright, so I have Mary in her little crate. This is the Wellness Center for Chickens. <laughs> um, we only do this when we think that they're really, really sick because I am a firm believer that they are gregarious animals. They're flock animals. They need to be with other chickens to be healthy. So we only crate them when we think they're really, really sick. And I just don't want other chickens picking on her, even though they haven't picked on her yet. I don't want her to not have the opportunity to have food or rest, especially because our chickens are cooped up in the run right now with predator activity in the area. If they were free ranging, I probably wouldn't have done this because they would have not all be in one area frustrated, so she'd have the opportunity to get food and water and rest. But she's already looking a little better just putting her in here. She's got some water. I have wet food for her. And I also brought alfalfa and I gave her some of their favorite treats, some grublies, and she hasn't eaten any of the grublies yet. And that's how you know she really is sick because they love grublies. She should be eating these like crazy right now. So I covered this to some of the lights coming in from outside, but when I close the door, um, what will happen is we have a light from our grow area which will shine over here so I kind of have it blocked off so that that light's not shining at her and then covered the top so that she'll have like a corner that is nice and dark. I do have a light on the ceiling just so that she can have um, light to see her food and water. A lot of times I've noticed if it's just completely dark in a room a chicken will just sleep because they think it's nighttime. So having a light on but having shady areas allows her to get away to a dark corner where she can rest but it's light enough that if she wants to she has the opportunity to eat and drink. Mary is a really really sweet chicken. Um, I hate to admit it but Mary is my second favorite out of the nine girls. Um, don't want to pick favorites or anything but Mary is just a really really sweet chicken. I like to carry her around and hold her and pet her and she's one of those chickens that normally a very healthy chicken wants to go and do chicken things like peck around and she's happy to do that but if you are holding her she's not squirming and like you can tell that she's not uncomfortable with you being holding her so a lot of times I'll hold her and I'll pet her and she'll just look at me and then she'll close her eyes and if you talk to her she shakes her head and she, you could tell that she's really a sweet a sweet sweet chicken she's kind of dog like in that I feel like she actually bonded with us um, a lot of the other chickens you can tell that they they like us because we give them food but they don't necessarily 
want that company and companionship and she's one of those that she really likes people you really like people huh yes you do she doesn't mind being pet some of these chickens if they're sick i won't pet them too much because you can tell that it's more stress than healing <clears throat> with her you can tell that she she likes to be pet good girl drinking water you gotta stay hydrated well i really need to get ready for work now i spent all morning with my little girl i'm really really hoping that she's gonna do good but now she's got to have some time alone let her rest and we'll see um she's got to pull through she's got to decide got to make a decision miss mary got to stick around with us for a little longer don't you you got many more years with us i have to work today um unfortunately i would love to be home with my sick chicken but i have to go to work so i will be home in about five hours for lunch and then, um, luckily where we live, Luis is able to come home for lunch and Jean, my sister-in-law will also come home for lunch. So the three of us, that's going to be three hours that she's going to have someone checking on her. Um, and then I'll go back to work and I'll see her this evening and check on her again. Oh, my little honey bun. Maybe she just needs rest. And so we'll come back and I will let you guys know how she's doing. I wish I could just stay home, but um, I wouldn't get anything productive done. I would just stare at her and be like, you better be getting better. <laughs> so sometimes, I mean, you gotta you do what you can do and then you got to let them, they gotta let them do some of that healing on their own as well. So it'll be good. She'll have no birds waking her up throughout the day and She'll just be able to focus on letting that immune system rebuild itself right now. All right, guys. So this is a quick update on Miss Mary. This is after work, uh, the same day we were looking at her earlier. Um, and she has actually perked up quite a bit. She is holding that right eye shut, but she does open it periodically. Her left eye is normal. I was seeing her grooming herself earlier. She's eating and drinking, which is good. And she's not quite as puffed up as she was earlier. So overall, I would say that this is an improvement. Like she's trying to come out, which is good. That's showing that she's feeling a little better. I'm feeling her crop and her crop is almost full, which means that she's been eating today. Access to food today has been mush which is um it's a moistened layer pellet where you just add some water to it so it kind of has this like soft wet food consistency <laughs> miss mary you are feeling better you are feeling better there you go good girl um, and then i also threw in some grublies and grublies are soldier fly larvae super nutritious and she has been eating those which is good look Look, it's good. Nope, nope. We're not gonna go that way. We're not gonna go that way. Look at this. Good girl, she ate that one. So she's been eating. She's also been picking through alfalfa. So that is really good. That is making me so happy. Now this is the most energetic I've seen her this entire day. So I really like this, actually. I like that she's kind of being adventurous. I just don't want her to poop on the floor. Um, at lunchtime, I did take her out of the crate and we moved her outside into the free ranging yard and let her spend some time with the rest of the flock. Are you listening to me? Hey. We let her spend some time with the rest of the flock and she loved that time, but she was looking really sick and really didn't walk around. She just kind of sat in the shade near the other girls. Hey. Hey, honey. Oh, your crop is full. I like that, honey bun. I'm thinking that the LA 200 is starting to work and it's just an intramuscular shot into that breast muscle. And there's a really good video on how to treat um, poultry with LA 200 because there's not a whole lot of information out there. I did find some 
um, through books and internet, but um, the best video that shows a great example that I've been able to find so far is from Cog Family Homestead. They have a, um, a video where they're treating one of their turkeys with LA-200 and they followed the same recommendations I was able to find through Auburn and um, Mary is improving, which gives us a lot of hope. We love Mary. <laughs> he says, that tickles. We love Miss Mary. Hey. Are you looking at me with your left eye? Are you looking at me? It looks like the swelling has gone down a little bit on her eyebrows. She was kind of bubbling up that, those sinuses. Um, the swelling is going down a little bit. So that, that's really good. I just wanted to give you all a quick update. And see, she if she was completely healthy, she would not be staying in this crate. She would be out exploring. Like, she was trying to get out, but she really didn't bite me too much on me having her stay in there. We got a rest. So I'm going to leave her in the crate tonight, overnight. And I'll see how she's looking tomorrow morning. And if she's looking real perky, I will put her back out with the girls. Because I think um, being around family and getting fresh air and sunshine... That's the best prescription out there for chickens. They love to be near their friends. Um, but the reason with her that we really separated her is she was not doing good this morning. And um, she's low on the pecking order, which means that she would struggle to get food. Um, if she was just out there with the other girls having to fend for herself, they'd keep her away from the food. So that's why she's in here where she can have as much water and food as she wants take her time, get to rest without anyone knocking her over or pushing her around. Hey, Miss Mary. Oh, my little one. Mary's just a sweet, sweet chicken. He's a sweet, sweet chicken. He's a sweet chicken. All right, well, we will see you guys tomorrow. Say good night, Mary. Say good night to Mary, guys. Hope you feel better in the morning, honey bun. It's the next day, and here's Miss Mary. She has both eyes open, and she's active and alert, eating and drinking, and she looks really good. So we are extremely happy. She does still have a little bit of swelling around her eyes, on her eyebrows, but I think that she's taking a turn for the better. So we're gonna go ahead, and today, we're gonna let her free range with the girls during the day. Um, and we are gonna be home all day, so we'll be able to keep an eye on them and see how they're doing and tonight we'll probably put her back in here for one more night and if she's doing really really good then we might let her move back in with the flock tomorrow full time i do want to say i think that that la 200 saved her life hey miss mary you gonna come out you gonna come out she's exploring she says, I'm never allowed in here. Of course I want to stay in here. Figure out where y'all keep those treats of mine. There she goes. <laughs> you stretching? Here she comes, back to meet the ladies. Her poop's looking good and solid. I like that. All right, we'll keep checking on you throughout the day. Hey guys, so we're doing some work out here today. I'm taking down my garden. Luis is rearranging our tool room. That way they can free range as much as possible today since we have that owl that lives in that tree now for the winter season. And I just wanted to give you guys an update on our girl, Little Miss Mary. So Mary has been napping a lot of the day. She has um, been resting a lot, but in times, briefly, she's been a little bit active. Right now, Mary is this chicken right here and she is dust bathing with the rest of the girls. So she's hanging out with the flock. And can, you can see, um, even though there's a strong pecking order, our girls are pretty nice. They don't just bully each other all day long. Like our Alpha Odette's right next to her and not telling her to get out of the way. So they're doing pretty good. She is 
being a chicken. Dust bathing is a very important behavior for chickens. It keeps them um, more hygienic. It gets rid of external parasites. And the fact that she is dust bathing means that, you know, it's not, the fact that she's dust bathing shows that she is improving dramatically, that she's at all even caring about her hygiene right now. There she goes, dust bathing. I love it. You can see Sunisa right over here. She is like 100% better. Her bumble foot has cleared up. She's happy, healthy, active. So Miss Sunisa is just nothing to worry about with her right now. And then Myrtle, she's our red chicken over there. This past week, she started having really bad symptoms of coccidiosis, which is a something that chickens can get and if one chicken has it you can assume that everybody needs to be treated so we treated the whole flock with um, coccidiostats it's a product called Corid it's a amprolium it just it helps get rid of coccidia in chickens and we thought we were might lose her last week and on that coccidiostat which helped clear all of the chickens of it even though nobody else was showing symptoms um, she has completely done a 180 and she's really happy and healthy right now so she's doing good and then this week it has been Miss Mary who has given us a scare she's had some kind of we think it's a respir upper respiratory infection her eyes were starting to swell shut. She was just not doing so good and was acting really crummy. And we thought, I, I was sure that we were gonna lose her and I was already just mentally preparing for the worst. She looked just like Kikio um, did before Kikio passed away. Now, if y'all guys don't know, if you're new to our channel, we started out with 10 chickens and we have nine chickens now. So in the history of us owning chickens, we've only ever lost one and that one was Kikio and we took her to a vet and we just think that she was potentially misdiagnosed and wasn't treated for the right illness and so we lost her but Mary was looking just like Kikio looked when Kikio passed away so we were just beside ourselves thinking that something really terrible was going to happen and I really think that she is doing better because of that shot that we gave her we gave her an injection the other day of this um, broad spectrum antibiotic um, called LA 200 and that just worked wonders for us and you weigh the chickens and you give them um, one cc per five pounds is what we went off of so Miss Mary weighed three and three quarter pounds so she got 0.75 cc's and you give it once every three days so she'll get her next round tomorrow and so two days in she is starting to turn around and it's just looking really good i just wanted to give you guys an update i will continue to keep checking on her today we are working outside so we have her in our sight all day long and so far she looks like she's improving dramatically for the better so I'm cleaning out my garden. I'm taking down all of the vegetation for the from the spring and summer garden and I'm throwing it all in here and sorting through. Anything that's not gonna be edible for the chickens is going in here and anything that we are gonna give to the chickens we're gonna throw in there for them to eat. And they've already kind of sorted through what they've wanted. So we're putting like all of our squash and melons in here, um, our basil, our herbs, things like that. And then we're throwing in tomatoes and eggplant and peppers into this one because a whole lot of that in large quantities isn't good for chickens to eat. But the crazy thing is Mary was curious about what was in here. And just a little while ago, she hopped up onto this wheelbarrow handle as a perch and was watching me throw vegetation in here and that's huge because Mary hasn't been feeling good and she was just walking all over the yard hung out over there for a little bit and worked her way over here and hopped up on that step and was able to fly up there so that's really showing that she is improving with leaps and bounds today which is just so good hey guys so this is what chickens do on a nice warm afternoon. Just hang out in a nice shady spot. Little spa day, spa treatment. It's a pretty good life being a chicken. You can see
see Mary is that chicken right there. She's doing pretty good. She's blending in with the other girls, acting like a chicken. And that's what we want to see at this point um, with her health. All right, it's almost nighttime. The sun has already gone down, so it's gonna get dark any minute now. We have the girls moved to the chicken run, and we actually have Miss Mary in here with the girls. And we think that we have decided that Miss Mary is gonna stay out here with the girls tonight. They're not picking on her. She's eating and drinking and she's grooming herself. She, you could tell her energy level is lower, but she's not puffed up like she was yesterday. So she's acting like a chicken today. And so we decided that she's gonna get to sleep with the girls tonight. Hi, Miss Mary. Her eyes are open. Her swelling on her face is going down. You wanna sleep with the girls tonight? We think that now that she's doing a lot better, um, it would definitely help her, her morale to be able to um, sleep with the girls in the chicken coop tonight. She'll get to cuddle up with them and huddle up to stay warm. And we just think that'll be better for her overall health. And I did go ahead and clean the chicken coop this afternoon. It was that time of the week. Um, cleaned the chicken run, although you can already see <laughs> this was just dirt and they've already scratched out a lot of that bedding because I threw a big pallet of alfalfa um, over here, a little square of alfalfa and they've just completely scratched that up in the past probably 45 minutes or so that they've been in here. Well, I just wanted to give you guys an update. All right, so this is Mary on day three. This morning, Mary looked absolutely great. She was running around, came out of the coop just with the other girls. Um, she was eating and drinking really well. She's grooming herself, dust bathing. So we went ahead and gave her one more injection, one more round of LA200 into her breast muscle. And she, she's messing with it right now. And that was just to finish off strong. We wanted to make sure that as she's fighting off this infection, she has the opportunity and the aid to really get out strong and heal completely. After um, I gave her that injection, I separated her from the other chickens and I gave her the opportunity to eat by offering her an entire can of wet food. Um, and we just gave her some wet cat food and she ate about half of it. So she does have a full tummy, a full crop, and I noticed that um, when the chickens that I've seen that are ill, after they eat, it takes them a little bit longer to kind of digest and it slows them down just a little bit from my experience. So I'm not too worried. She is still grooming herself. She's taking care of herself. She's just a little more restful. And I do like that she's undercover because we do have owls in the area. I mean, if you're gonna have a chicken who's just moving a little slower, resting a little more, it's good that she's under the cover of some bushes versus being out with the other girls in the open. I have noticed that the other girls are hanging out with her when they're resting, so she's not being excluded from the flock at all. Nobody's picking on her, um, so which makes me really happy because Mary is relatively low on our pecking order, so whenever she is completely healthy and they're all running for treats, she's one of the last ones to be allowed to eat. Um, so it's good that she's still getting a good share of food and water and that they are still hanging out with her and dust bathing and grooming together and you know having a nice social order here. I just wanted to give y'all another update. So she's doing pretty good today. Hey Jua. This video is not about you. It's not about you today. It's not about Miss Dua. Look at you molting. You see this? These feathers. <laughs> so another thing that might make it just a little bit easier for your chicken to get sick during this season of change is the fact that they're molting. Every single adult chicken goes through an annual molt. 
that means that they lose a large percentage of their feathers and they have to grow new ones every single year. Um, feathers are made mostly of protein, which is pretty cool, but um, it means that they have to spend a lot of protein to make new feathers as well. And in doing so, it might tank their immune system just a little bit. You can support your chickens by adding extra protein to their diet during this time. We like to offer fresh tuna. We also give them cat food. They love dry cat food thrown out with some chicken scratch. Um, just anything with a little bit of extra protein will go a long way in helping the girls grow some new feathers. So when a chicken loses a lot of feathers, they also have to grow a lot of feathers. So as I walk around, I'm picking up a ton of feathers off the floor, trying to make some crafts out of them. But I'm noticing that they are just dumping feathers right now. A lot of our chickens look bald in a couple areas and it's completely natural. Happens to all chickens who are really healthy. It just means that they're growing fresh feathers for the next year. We still think you're beautiful, Dua. Look at that. Look at all this molting right here. What are you doing, Dua? Are you growing new feathers? Are you growing some new feathers for us? You still have your nice pretty tail feathers. Yasha's beating you there. She already got rid of those. Yeah, we're talking about you, Yasha. Yeah, we are. What this month in owning chickens has taught me is that when I think I know, I don't know. So I am just rolling with it, I am studying even more, and I am going to be the first to admit that I'm no chicken expert. So it's just a great way to learn. When things come up, you learn how to fix them. So when a chicken gets bumblefoot, you learn how to treat bumblefoot. When a chicken gets coccidia, you learn how to treat coccidia. When a chicken gets a respiratory infection, you know the drill. So. That's what we're doing here on the homestead this month is we're just being mindful of our chickens as they're going through this molting season, as we're going through weather changes, as we're winding down in the garden. We're able to spend just a little bit more time thinking about our chickens and what do they need to be happy and healthy. Well, I wish you guys a wonderful weekend, a wonderful day, and a wonderful season. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. If you liked this video and want to learn more about chickens while I learn more about chickens, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we will learn more about chickens together.